Hello everyone, my name is Alberto, welcome back to my channel. Please like and subscribe, it's a great help for me. In this video I'm gonna show you how I made this bowling shirt. I'm starting by the pattern, I patterned it myself quite very quickly. It's a very simple pattern, but it differs from the classic shirt that I did make in the past. Um, I'll link it around here if you haven't seen it in a few key ways. Uh, first of all, there's a couple vents at the sides. The front is not double folded, but it has a detached lining and so does the yoke, which is a sort of a, a floating lining. It's quite interesting. So I started by cutting out all the pieces, as you can see. I have my back with the vents, the yoke, which is a lining, the front, the lining for the front, then we have obviously the sleeve and the collar. Again, slight differences from a classic shirt, the collar is in one piece instead of two, and the side vent is asymmetrical. So I'm gonna start by ironing all the pieces one by one because I did wash and iron the fabric by itself, but it is a cotton, so it's prone to, you know, creasing and stuff like that. Then I'm gonna overlock. In my case, I chose to overlock bit by bit as I was going. You could overlock every single part of every piece all in the beginning, but I thought this way was better to avoid uh, excess bulk. I'm gonna fold up one centimeter at the bottom of the yoke because as I said this is a sort of a, a floating lining so it's not stitched down and it's not in a separate piece attached to the back as it would normally be. So this is basically just a folded hem that I um, only folded once to again avoid extra bulk and I overlocked it and folded it and stitched it. In this case I'm also gonna add my label and this is stitched on the yoke. I chose to stitch it all around otherwise it would have been attached later. Then I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other parts of the lining which is the front. In this case, I'm gonna fold the side that's towards the inside of the shirt, or towards the, the sides, you would say. I did overlock it already, so I just fold it in and stitch it down. And I'm gonna do it for both sides. Then I'm gonna start attaching the front lining to the front. In this case it is sewn shut at the bottom at one centimeter and this will help me sort of guide the rolling of the hem later. And then it's completely closed in the front and it's closed partially at the top and this will create a, basically a fake lapel which is the characteristic of the bowling shirt. I made notches where everything should stop because the rest of the collar will be turned. Every seam is then ironed open so it's nice and flat and it's easier to fold the seam inside out when we come to this part so we have it nice, flat, we don't have any creases, and the seam is very even. So again, slowly, we iron all of that flat. Then we attach the shoulders. These are attached the same exact way as they would on a regular yoke, with the difference that we are just attaching the shoulders and the rest of the yoke is, as I said, floating, is not attached to the bottom of the back. So I'm just attaching them sort of sandwich style. 
with the front in the middle between the two shoulders. And as you can see it's open. Then I'm gonna overlock this all together, this one seam, and again this creates less bulk than if all three were already previously overlocked. That's why I like it more. Then I'm gonna very simply iron it to the side and make sure everything is nice and flat. So that then we're very simply gonna edge stitch it down and it's gonna look very nice. Here, as you can see, we're just gonna do a very simple edge stitch to hold it down. And on the other shoulder. And then we can start adding the sleeves because now we have a complete shoulder. So very simply, again, I'm attaching everything. I'm not gonna do French seams just because it, again, this is a cotton, but it, it's sort of a thicker one. It has a nice weight for a shirt, but I don't wanna add too much bulk and this way we have simpler seams. Also, I'm being quite careful while attaching the, the floating yoke because if, if it were to be attached not evenly, it would pull uh, as, you know, a lining could and that would sort of distort the outside shape. Again, overlocking this new seam. And then I'm gonna stitch it to the side by creating basically a, a fake French seam. This is less refined than a French seam would, but I do like it a lot because it's a lot lighter. So on lighter weight fabrics, I feel like it creates less of an impression on the outside fabric. Once that's done, I can join the sides and finally start to see the actual body of the shirt matching all my seams. And here I'm just gonna stop at the notch I made for the vent. Again, overlock this seam as well. And when we'll get to the vent, I'm gonna overlock them separately. This is because since it's an asymmetric vent, one side will have uh, the rest of the seam that we did as a side seam, and it's gonna be completely stitched to the side. The other side will have some extra fabric that folds back to create a nicely finished uh, vent. At this point, we can also overlock the bottom of the shirt because then we can take the chance to hem everything or if you prefer, you can leave it unhemmed and do a double rolled hem, which is what I chose to do. I'm closing the bottom of the vent exactly the same as the front. This will create a nice clean edge. And then I'm gonna stitch down the side seam, which will finish one of the sides of the vent, and also create our fake French seam all the way on the side.
then we can stitch down the other side of the vent, the one with the extra fabric, and make sure that we end up on a rolled hem. This will help us guide it so it, it's already started, basically. Cleaning up the extra threads. And then we can move on into doing the rest of the hem, which is a double rolled hem. I made it by hand. You could pin it down if you need. Or if you're having a hard time, an easier way is to fold about 0.5, stitch it down, and then fold that again. That way you're gonna make sure that it doesn't move too much. You will end up having a double line of stitching, but it still works. I made the color off camera because it's made the exact same way, it's just a different shape. But you've seen me make it already, and if you haven't, again I'm gonna link the other shirt videos. Once the collar is attached on one side, I fold over the other side and just edge stitch it down. That way we're gonna have a nice finished collar. This has a bit of a trickier shape, so it takes a bit more time. But it does give a nice effect and a nice finish, so I was pretty happy with it. Then, once the collar is attached, I'm gonna edge stitch it all around. Again, this is sort of an extra touch. You don't necessarily need to do it, but it does keep the edges nice and neat, and it avoids the collar sort of ballooning up. Once that is done, I folded and hemmed my sleeves. Again, very simple, overlock them, just fold it back and hemmed at three centimeters, which is sort of the standard hem. I do normally, unless there's some reason why I need a taller one. Now, with my smaller sewing machine, I'm doing some small zigzag details where the collar is attached, where the vent opens, just to give it some extra strength. And then with the automatic buttonhole maker, I'm doing all the buttonholes. This is very simple, the machine does all the work. Once that is done, I clean up all of them. I attach all the buttons. I love using these little metal buttons. I think they give such a nice touch and they have a nice feel as well, much better than those plastic ones. And this is the final result. I am very happy with how the shirt turned out. I hope you like it. Here's a few shots of the different details. It is a very simple design, but it has a nice fit. I like the pattern and I'm very happy with it. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you aren't. You can find my other videos on my channel and there's some playlists if you're interested. Everything is a great help. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next video. Bye!